Hey, James Wise from Holton Wise. Today we have another question in the Ask James Wise video series. This question comes from Hannah5859. What do you think of single parents with large number of children, morbidly obese people, and mobility problem, terminally ill, or mental patients, gang members, people with friends moving in for a few days? This was posted in response to a tenant screening video. Let's dive in. Well, it's a st <laughs> I'm not even really sure if this is like a legitimate question from Hannah5859. It could be just Hannah's trolling me. We do get a lot of people that troll, say a lot of weird stuff on the internet. For instance, I had somebody accuse me of ripping his brother off and being a former Scientologist in Connecticut. Never been to Connecticut, never studied Scientology. So it could be something along those lines. Could be a legitimate question from a new landlord who just doesn't understand. I don't know, either way, let's tackle the topic. The first thing we need to understand is a little something called the Fair Housing Act. You see, back in 1968, we decided to make it illegal to discriminate against anybody for things such as their race, their color, national origin, religion, sex, familial status, pregnancy, and disability. So, with that in mind, as landlords, we can and we should discriminate in certain situations, but there are certain situations, many of which have been described in this question, that we cannot discriminate in any way, shape, or form. Let's tackle these topics. What do you think of single parents with a large number of children? Single parents with a large number of children are a protected class, okay? You cannot discriminate against a protected class due to fair housing laws. Next topic, morbidly obese people with mobility problems. Morbidly obese people are a protected class. When screening tenants, you cannot discriminate against a protected class. Next, terminally ill or mental patients. Three, four, three. Terminally ill people, mentally ill people are a protected class. When you are screening tenants, you cannot discriminate against a protected class. Gang members. We got a hit, we have hit on one. Gang members, gang members are not a protected class. You can absolutely and should absolutely discriminate against gang members. If you are trying to rent a house or apartment and your potential tenant is a member of the Crips, you should go ahead and deny them. They will probably be a bad tenant. <laughs> I also don't think they're gonna pass your criminal background check. So gang members, that is a thumbs down. Quick little story about an experience with running the gang members. Uh, a couple years back, I had a commercial space. We had a motorcycle gang that applied to rent it, and uh, you know they wanted to turn it into a motorcycle club. You know this is a commercial space that butts up to a residential neighborhood. You know these guys, you know tattoos, leather jackets, tattoos all over their faces. If any of you have watched my tenant screening video, uh, I do not rent to people with tattoos on their face. So if you, you or you have a tattoo on your face, it doesn't matter to me if you're a good person. I don't have time to worry about that stuff. You're getting denied. I recommend other investors simply deny people with tattoos on their faces. So all these motorcycle guys, they're complaining, they're screaming, they're crying, they're saying they're gonna report me to, I don't even know where they're planning on reporting me, but they wanna report me for discrimination, saying that I'm discriminating against them specifically because they're in a motorcycle club, AKA a motorcycle gang. Yeah, dude, I am discriminating against you because you're in a motorcycle club. Having tattoos on your face, much like being a gang member, is not a protected class. We can discriminate against gang members. We can discriminate against people with tattoos on their faces. We can discriminate against felons. We can discriminate against people who don't pay their bills. We can discriminate against people who get drunk and commit crimes. These are things that we can and we should discriminate against. Now, one serious thing that I really want to point out is I don't really have anything personally against motorcycles or people in motorcycle clubs. Again, they could very well be great people. They could be the greatest people ever. However, I, as a business owner, need to mitigate my risk. So whatever my personal thoughts are, I put those aside. I play this based on math. I play this based on numbers. I play this based on odds. If the odds are higher than average that a tenant who is in a motorcycle gang will be a bad tenant, I eliminate them. That doesn't mean that I hate motorcycles, have nothing against them. I just have things against losing money. Just like the casino 
Just like the house always wins, when you're a landlord, you're the house, baby. You gotta play the odds. Any risk that can be mitigated should be mitigated. We didn't rent to that biker gang because they were gonna be nothing but trouble. I'm sure there's gonna be tons of alcohol, possibly some drug use. And even if there wasn't, okay, there was gonna be a stigma. And that's just a stigma that as a landlord, I don't wanna deal with. I have other things at play. You have the neighbors, you have the city. If they're gonna be crawling up my butt wondering what this motorcycle gang is doing, what good does that do for my business? Remember, as landlords, our job isn't to provide housing or commercial spaces to everybody who wants them. Our job is to run our housing and our commercial spaces efficiently and profitably. So sometimes you gotta deny people. It's just part of the business. And then lastly, she asks about people with friends moving in for a few days. I assume in this situation, you're no longer talking about tenant screening. You probably have some tenants who have already moved in and now they're having some friends move in for a few days. Well, to me, that tells me that person that's moving in for a few days is probably now your tenant. Just so you know, once that person moves in, whether or not you authorized them or allowed them to move in, they're your tenant now. It don't matter that they're not on the lease. They have all the rights of any regular tenant. If you decide that you want that person to leave, that is totally fine. They're not authorized to be there. You can make them leave, but it's not gonna be as simple as you just call up like, hey, get out of my house, you're not allowed to live there. Don't work that way. Don't bother calling the police because they're not gonna do anything because again, that person is a tenant now. The only way to remove a tenant is through a formal eviction process. So no matter where you live or where you're investing, whatever your regular eviction process is to evict one of your regular tenants, you must do the exact same thing to this tenant. You're gonna need to prove in a court that this person is not authorized to live there. So it might not make sense to immediately try to get them out. Maybe you wanna maybe try to work with them. Maybe you wanna figure out what they got going on. It's kinda of like jumping in a pool and then trying to avoid getting wet. You're already in the pool. You're already wet. You can't get any more wet. The worst case scenario with moving someone out is having to go through the process of paying for an eviction. So if you could potentially work with that person, maybe run their credit, see if they're a danger and if they're not really causing you any problems, just kind of let it ride. I don't know. It's going to be a case by case basis that you'll have to address. Hannah 5859, I hope that answers your question. For the rest of you that have questions, check out the rest of the videos in the Ask James Y series. If you don't see your question, simply post your question in the comments below this video and I'll make a video just like this one answering it for you. Thanks for watching the video. I'm James Wise, co-founder of Holton Wise. If you are interested in hearing more about me and my personal story, how I turned one investment property into a management portfolio valued over $50 million, I want you to go ahead and follow my personal Instagram, at HWPG. I want you to go ahead and click the subscribe button for more real estate deals and educational content, as well as check out some of the other videos we have throughout this channel. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy.